Hello, my name is Shelley Mead. I'm the project director and editor for the ITEA CATS Human Exploration Curricular Project and the former assistant director for the ITEA Standards for Technological Literacy Project, the Technology for All Americans Project. Presumably, you're watching this presentation because you know how critically important it is to market and promote the study of technology. There are many benefits to a successful marketing campaign, including increased access to resources and increased enrollment. This presentation will provide you with some information about marketing, some suggestions for applying this information to technological literacy and technology education. But first, did you know that marketing was actually essential and required part of a standards-based program? If you want your program to be standards-based, you should be aware that there are two technological literacy standards in advancing excellence in technological literacy, otherwise known as AETL, that deal with marketing and promotion. AETL standard P5, guideline C, requires that teachers responsible for the management of the technology program consistently market and promote the study of technology. And similarly, standard P5 guideline F requires that administrators responsible for the management of the cross-curricular technology program consistently market and promote the study of technology. Now let's move on to some marketing strategies. The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell is a wildly successful book that many of you may have heard of. It talks about how little things can make a big difference. But first, what does the term tipping point mean? Tipping point is based on the premise that ideas and products and messages and behaviors spread just like viruses do. According to Malcolm Gladwell, all epidemics have tipping points. What this means is that things are spread from person to person. They're contagious and a small number of people can be the source of the outbreak. But perhaps the definition that most suits our search for ways to promote public awareness about technology is that the tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. The principles behind epidemics and therefore the tipping point are contagiousness, that little causes can have big effects, and that change happens not gradually, but in one dramatic moment. But how do we provoke that tipping point? There are three rules to achieving the tipping point. In a nutshell, the law of few implies that fine-tuning your audience will allow you to target those individuals who will ultimately matter, who will be listened to, and who will then in turn affect the opinions of others. These people include the connectors, they are networked to a great many people and can carry your message. The mavens, who collect knowledge and are socially motivated to share it. And the salesmen, who have the ability to persuade. The second law is the stickiness factor, which means that there are specific ways of making a contagious mes message memorable. Consider slogans that you might remember, like, where's the beef, just do it, or got milk. These illustrate how a message, whatever it is promoting, can stick in the minds of individuals. To achieve stickiness, make small critical adjustments to your effort, then stick with what works. And lastly, the power of context deals with the bystander problem, or the tendency of human beings to ignore a scream in the middle of the night rather than call the police. Human beings are more likely to come to the aid of others if they feel that they are the only person who can accomplish this task. They are more likely to fight if they feel cornered. And small subsets of the population with specific common interests or ideals are more likely to work together towards change than a large group with more general commonalities among the individuals. So how do we place this in the context of public awareness of technology and the need for technological literacy? Who are the connectors, mavens, and salesmen? What will stick? What subsets of the population will be motivated to induce change? Obviously, the answers will depend upon specific changes that you are trying to induce. The next strategies are from a book by Al Rees and Jack Trout entitled Positioning. This book provides suggestions for how to be seen in an overcrowded advertising marketplace. This is relevant because one of the problems we face in carving a niche for technological literacy is an overcrowded curriculum. 
Positioning is not what you do to a product. It is what you do to the mind of the prospect. In other words, when you market anything, you need to correlate that thing with what your target audience already knows and accepts as truth. Individuals are bombarded with information. They are more likely to retain and accept a concept that can be aligned with what they already know than a concept that is completely new. The basic approach of positioning is to manipulate what's already in the mind, to retie the connections that already exist. How might we consider this idea of positioning technology in the minds of the public? One way to approach it is to consider technology education as it relates to other educational disciplines, such as science, mathematics, language arts, social studies, and vocational education. Consider what mindsets your target audience have about these disciplines. How can you take advantage of these mindsets? Another way to approach it is to relate the technological literacy standards to other educational standards. Again, what does your audience know and accept about standards in other disciplines? And how can you make these preconceptions work for you? Or perhaps we reverse that and try to reposition other standards based on the growing need to implement standards for technological literacy. Undoubtedly, you can think of other contexts in which to consider positioning the study of technology. The thing to remember is the, the principle behind positioning, that rather than confronting head-on the preconceived notions of your audience, we can use those same preconceived notions to our and your audience's advantage. In 2005, Greg Steelstra published Pyro Marketing, which was favorably endorsed by Al Rees, the co-author of Positioning. The idea of marketing as fire is also comparable to the concept of ideas spreading like a virus from the tipping point. People are saturated by marketing. They would, on the whole, prefer to ignore it. How can you get beyond the watering influence of washed up ideas that saturate consumers and the marketplace? How can you find a way to make your fire spread? Begin by gathering the driest tinder, which means identifying the people who are most likely to be influenced by your ideas. Again, this is comparable to the law of few from the tipping point. Continue by touching them with a match or proving to them, to these selected people, that what you have to offer works. In other words, don't just tell them, show them. Now this is the point where many advocates make the mistake of stopping, but once you have started the fire, you need to fan the flames. By helping the people you have convinced tell others about your ideas, they can convince people who are far beyond your own reach. And finally, save the coals from the fire you started by keeping a record of who you influenced so you can capitalize on this investment in the future. Mass marketing was effective in the early days of modern advertising, but as time has come and gone. Such factors as the need to have it your own way, the decentralizing of populations geographically, multiple media offerings, and the number of individuals tuning out of advertising in general are resulting in the need for a new approach to capturing an audience. While mass marketing operates on the principle that people are the same, hiro marketing recognizes that people are different. While mass marketing focuses on the need of the company, hiro marketing focuses on the needs and wants of the consumer because ultimately the success of your idea or product is not about you. While mass marketing is concerned with cost per thousand, pyro marketing is concerned with cost per customer. Mass marketing immerses the consumer in information in an attempt to coerce. Pyro marketing ignites the consumer, creating excitement. And while mass marketing tends to puff up its product or message, pyro marketing remains true to advertising honesty. In other words, don't waste your consumer's valuable time. Your marketing resources, whether money, people, or time, are finite. Consider how you will use your match, because you may only get one chance. Find your own marketing metaphor, because metaphors work. The way our brains process new information depends on how similar information has been processed in the past. Neural pathways become habitual, and the older the dog, the harder it is to teach it new tricks. However, much like the web of dendrites in the brain, 
There are many pathways to fire an idea from one point of contact to multiple points of contact by selective marketing. In other words, the people whom you excite may have another point of contact with those who are not directly receptive to your message. By focusing your efforts on those who are receptive, you increase your chances of exciting those who are not initially. Here is an exercise to get you started in pyro marketing. Let's start by assuming that your audience consists of your own students. Start by writing a description of your program from your perspective. Then, write a description of your program from your students' perspectives. Take that number two above and make it one sentence and only one sentence. And then, write down how your program benefits your students. This exercise will provide you with some valuable perspective to start a fire using the pyro marketing approach. In other words, this exercise provides some background information that will prepare you to promote to the people most likely to buy, give them an experience with your product or service, help them tell others, and keep a record of who they are. The next several slides will help us pre present strategies from an article in the November 2004 issue of The Technology Teacher by Mike Fitzgerald called How to Promote a Technology Program for some quotes. The most critical step in any formal marketing campaign will be to gain the favor and support of your administration and school board. And the biggest mistake that a teacher can make is not seeking the support of community, colleagues, administration, and students. What is your unique selling position? Whatever it is, it should address how your program is critically important for students and address the needs of the community, academia, and or the workforce. You might ask yourself this question, what can your program offer that students cannot get anywhere else? Fitzgerald asserts that the USP can be used as the philosophical foundation of your action plan and should be used in every piece of material that you use to promote your program. And also, the challenge is to demonstrate to the public the unique opportunities your program provides for students. How can you capture repeat customers? You might focus on the social, physical, emotional, and academic needs of the students. And borrowing from well-known marketing strategies, remember that 80% of your business, which in this case is enrollment in education, comes from existing customers, your students, while 20% comes from new customers. When marketing within your educational arena, remember that the ultimate goal of any PR activity is to win favor and goodwill. The path that a teacher must follow in promoting a program begins with local support. And PR efforts should always appeal to the wants and needs of the students as well as the community. Here's a suggested process for promoting your program or course. Also keep in mind that the marketing of your program should always be based on the needs of students first and always start your public relation efforts small and keep your PR efforts positive. Another set of strategies for change we'd like to share with you are taken from an article on advocacy in the winter 2004 issue of the PDK Connection, the member newsletter of Phi Delta Kappa International. In this article they state, the decisions that advocates seek to influence are those made by policymakers who control or influence education, whether they serve on the local school board or town council, in state or federal government, or in some other institution. One of the questions that comes up when we consider the public awareness problem is where do we start? Do we work from the top down, starting with policymakers who will filter the message down through the schools and ultimately to the parents and students? Or do we start at the grassroots level with parents and use their energy and resources to instigate policymaker change? Again, there is no simple answer to this question, and the best course of action may combine both approaches. In general, as you pursue your own efforts to increase public awareness with regard to technology and technological literacy, you may find it helpful to answer two very basic questions which are fundamental to any attempt at effective communication. Who is your audience and what is the message? Once you have identified the answers to these questions, it will be necessary to revisit them often to be sure your efforts are supporting your cause. And finally, 
From the addenda document to the technological literacy standards entitled Realizing Excellence, which gives practical suggestions for developing standards-based programs, remember to present the message in the receiver's self-interest, be concise, to the point, and stimulating, select your spokespersons carefully, and repeat the message several times in a variety of formats. And again, from Realizing Excellence, there are many methods for getting your message out, such as handouts, presentations, listservs, websites, student organizations, business support, positive newspaper articles, press releases, and other media. Let's look back at the requirements for marketing a standards-based program. Both teachers and administrators market technology programs to the community, helping to increase public understanding about technology. Advisory committees are very helpful in this process. Student invol involvement in organizations such as the Technology Student Association and the Junior Engineering Technical Society are available to assist. Teachers and administrators develop relationships with local businesses and industries to solicit understanding and support. Teachers and administrators promote technology programs and technological literacy as essential components of education to parents, the local school board, and civic and economic development groups. While a great deal of information has been presented, here are some of the most crucial points to remember. Realize that marketing is important and essential to a standards-based program. Accept that a single individual or a small group of people can trigger great change. Concentrate marketing efforts on those you can affect. In other words, stop trying to convince those who will not be convinced. It is a waste of your time and theirs. Know what is most important and unique about your program. Determine the characteristics of your program that will resonate with the values and mindsets of your audience. That is, focus on what your audience has to gain, not on what you or your program has to offer. Show your audience how your program works in their best interests. Help your audience spread the word. And find your marketing metaphor, because metaphors work. And finally, work towards gaining support both within your educational community and in the community beyond formal education. And be positive. Keep your message honest and sincere. Thank you for viewing this presentation. If you have any questions or comments about the presentation or about marketing for the study of technology, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would very much like to work with you to promote the vision of ITEA's technological literacy standards that all students can and should become technologically literate.